Hello everyone and welcome to the Italian Kazuki podcast. My name is Katie and today is Friday, August 30th, 2019 and this is episode 84. I would like to say hello to any new and all my returning viewers as well. Thank you so much for joining me whether this is your first or your multiple of time coming by. <laughs> you can find me across social media as Italian Nekuzuki and on Ravelry as Nekuzuki Knits. Um, <clears throat> obviously I'm late compared to where I normally would record, um, but considering that I posted on Friday last week, I figured that I would wait a couple extra days this week simply because I didn't actually have that much to show you. Uh, I did try to record on Wednesday, but honestly the light was really bad. Um, and I just, it was really rushed. I had appointments that day and everything like that, so it, it didn't work out. This is a much better day to do it. Um, yeah, I guess we'll jump right into it. I have been knitting, not a significant amount, but a bit. I worked on my mud punch socks this week. And actually I got most of the work done on these on Wednesday. I went and saw Shaw and Hobbs with a friend. Hobbs and Shaw? Hobbs and Shaw, the new Fast and the Furious movie. I have actually never seen a Fast and the Furious movie, but I saw the trailers for this one and thought that it looked exactly up my alley for the summer, like viewing, and we got a good deal on tickets for like the fancy recliner seats. So I figured why not, let's go see that. Um, and then we went for a fantastic dinner, it was delicious. Anyway, uh, I worked on these in the movie. I definitely did drop some stitches. I can see where I've had to pick them up, but honestly, there are a pair of socks and the uh, flubbed stitches are going to actually be on my um, leg. So you're not really gonna see them that often. Um, and let's see, they, I did stop them in the movie because I figured that they're probably ready for ribbing and they are. Um, I got to that point, so I'll, likely go through that's actually perfect because now I can go through the four stripes in the ribbing and then cast off and start the next sock on the right yes yes because the green goes to the speckles sorry I like self-striping socks are one of those socks that I do like to have matching so if I go like I am losing my mind. Yeah, I would end on a green stripe here and then I can start the next sock on the next speckled thing. Stripe, that word. Um, bean knit on Chiagu Red Lace, uh, US 1 2.25 millimeter needles. And I will hopefully not get second sock syndrome too badly, so I'll just cast on the second one as soon as the first one is done, which will be pretty soon at this point. We do also have a kitty cat visitor. <laughs> She's so tiny and I love her and she really just wants to be in my lap. So camera shy. But if you see a tail wagging around, that's her. This is Miss Dahlia. Um, and then the other thing I did get quite a bit of work done on, but I did not finish the row on. <laughs> I was gonna try and finish the row. I'm halfway through on a row on the Hirofude. This is by Hiroko Fukatsu. It is being knit out of Madeline Tosh Tosh Merino Light, which is their singles in their coquette colorway. And I finished about a repeat. Yeah, about a repeat. Um, being knit on the US 5 3.75 millimeter needles, which are called for in the pattern. And I'm into the body increases. So that's really exciting actually. Um, this is going to block quite large, I think, because of the lace and the fact that it's a singles yarn, so it should grow significantly. It does fit currently in the upper arm, but I do want it to be a little bit more drapey, um, which I think I can achieve through blocking. And this little progress keeper is from Japan. So these are all hand-painted, handcrafted and hand-painted by a lady in Japan. And I do have a few left up on the site. I placed another order with her, but I did not get the scruffed cats. I got some different styles of hers. Um, so if you want a scruffed cat, now is the time to get it. I'm gonna move him down, her down, I guess. Most calicos are hers. Uh, I did work on my design project as well, slightly. Um, I didn't know if it was going to work 
at the stitch count I had and so I took it off the needles and then I had to pick up all the stitches because it was going to work. Um, when in doubt, just keep going sometimes apparently. <laughs> Sorry, there. Dahlia will chase yarn if it's loose and rolling around. Flynn is a wool cat and he likes the woolly wools, like natural wools, so I do have to be careful sometimes. And uh, all of the yarn for the Hidofu day is actually bald instead of caked mostly. So I do have to watch to make sure that it doesn't end up on the floor with Dahlia chasing it around gleefully. Um, and then because, you know, six weeks before a show, five weeks before a show, a month before a show, uh, when I'm supposed to be sewing, casting or having a bow start eye, this is obviously the solution to everything. Um, so I am swatching for another top. <laughs> okay, so the plan for this is this will actually be my knitting for a plane going to Florida. I want to get that, I need to get the Hito Fude done and I want to get the tank done before we go. So this will come after that, but I did want to swatch. Um, I'm swatching for the Diaphanous Raglan by Jessica Maid. You can find it on Ravelry. It's a really nice um, fingering held with mohair sing um mohair silk sweater it's a raglan um which actually i'm wearing right now the raglan with the diagonal increases it's sized really well it's got like i'm a 40 to 42 inch bust depending on the day um and i am the size medium on it which never happens for me so and that's including about a four to six inch amount four and a half to six and a half inches of ease um because i think the pattern says that it will come out to a 40 and a bit bust 40 41 and a bit anyway um i had gotten this yarn at river city in may when i was up there and um was going to knit the queen's park cardigan out of it but i think this is a much better use of it for me um, I don't actually have enough of the Queen's Park cardigan, whereas this one I can. I will be lengthening the body. I'm not going to do the crop of the diaphanous raglan, but I should have enough that I can actually do that. Uh, she does give suggestions for every inch added to the body. Um, so I think it's an extra 300 yards, and I think I have just enough to eke that out. Since the sleeves on it are actually long enough for me, uh, which is really fantastic. And uh, this is being knit out of fleece artist in their BFL 2 slash 8 in charcoal. I'll double with their Zem Zambezi also in charcoal because it was a set that came together. So I have two skeins of the BFL and a skein of the mohair silk. So right now I am just swatching. Um, it is supposed to be a very like loose drapey knot like it'll have structure, but it's not going to be, um, it's supposed to be sexy and feminine and um, loose. It's not supposed to have a traditional sweater gauge as far as I can tell. And so I think I'm getting approximately where I would want. I would never want, okay, so typically when you do a sweater, you test it with a finger. If you can poke a finger through like this um, or get one through the holes, which almost I can, it's too loose of gauge. Um, but given that this is supposed to be kind of a little bit more of a, like I said, drapey, sexy, diaphanous, it's a very well named, apt named sweater. Uh, I think this is probably the gauge I'll go with. I don't think I want to go down. I will obviously double check to make sure that I'm at least close for stitches. <laughs> um, considering that I want this to fit but um I think I think I'm where I'm at or where I want to be at least and you can't completely see me through it so that's always good and what ends up happening is that the body is knit with this held double and then the sleeves are knit with just the merino silk um I think I gotta actually go in and read the instructions and make sure that I've got that right it might be held double but it is knit larger needles or something like that so anyway um super excited to knit this i will get the gauge swatch finished blocked i do wet block before because i find that yarns do grow and that gives me a truer image of how this is going to fit 
Um, it is knit in pieces at the top and then joined and knit in the round at the bottom. Typically with that in that circumstance I would normally swatch in the round but the pattern does say specifically to swatch flat so that's where we're at. Um, yeah I've been watching this bee knit up for a while and following her on Instagram and watching it and it's absolutely gorgeous and I figured this would be a good staple to add to my collection as well because I don't I don't have a lot of like classic pieces in my wardrobe um, like classic colors either I need to add a few more neutrals I tend to gravitate towards really bright yarns and like I love knitting them but I don't necessarily have anywhere or anything to wear them with so I need to add a few more things that are a little bit more neutral and uh, staples of my wardrobe now granted I do end up wearing a lot like I wear a lot of color or I wear a lot of what ends up happening is my knitwear takes the forefront of the um, the outfit so it is the like piece de resistance which is fine and actually I prefer it that way because if I'm putting this much time and effort and money into projects um, I want it to be that but sometimes I also want something that's a little bit more demure or fits a different category than my other knits. So right now I have a lot of cardigans and I've got one pullover that I wear regularly. That's that Erin pullover that I knit last year or finished last year, the Amy Herzog design in the gold. And I wear that a lot in the winter time, so that's awesome. But I don't have anything that's kind of also a transition piece that's a pullover or anything like that and I think this might be a little bit better so we'll see uh, I'm gonna knit it anyway I'm I like the look of it enough that I think it'll be a good addition to my wardrobe um, trying to be a little bit more conscious of what I'm adding um, don't hold me that to like don't hold me to that however because given the good vibe shawl and a few other things it's kind of like yeah um, I'm gonna knit what I wanted it to <laughs> <laughs> and if it doesn't suit me anymore then I'll donate it or gift it to someone because that's how this works right like hand knits should be around and loved and if I don't love them anymore they can go to someone else who will and that's kind of where I'm getting to with my closet as well um, <clears throat> I don't bring a lot of clothing into my closet anymore I used to a little bit with university um, but not now and so I, that is where I'm trying to be a bit more conscious about what I purchase and bring in um, I typically wear my clothing until it falls apart um, especially working from home it's really nice because 95% of the time no one actually sees me except for the cats and they don't care they really don't they don't care that there's holes in the shoulders of a sweater that I've had for 12 years so <laughs> um, so that's not something I consistently worry about I definitely have a show, show wardrobe separate and uh, <clears throat> from my actual work wardrobe but I think this might be something that actually bridges that gap as well. So I'm excited to get it swatched and going. Um, let's see, this week I did finish them. I, what I've been listening to, I finished The Mermaid by Christina Henry. Uh, really enjoyed it. Really kicking myself for not having read or listened to it earlier. Um, we'll probably purchase it as a book as well because I think reading it would be spectacular. And then I started and finished The Ghost Bride by Yang Shi Chu, which if you have been listening for a while, I think I did read when I was podcasting. Um, really, really, really enjoyed it again. Um, that is another one I'm going to have to buy a hard copy of. I really enjoyed the reading of it, however, too, because it's actually the author. So Yang Shi Chu actually narrates it as well. And uh, yeah, I don't really have a lot of words for it besides go read it because it's worth it uh, and then I moved on to her newest book which is The Night Tiger also by Yang Shi Chu also narrated by Yang Shi Chu um, both of these books these audiobooks are off of audible um, and then so I'm listening to that right now I'll probably get through most of it today um, because I am sewing that's pretty much all I'm doing right now well besides knitting um, <laughs> I am sewing a lot for Knit City. Um, the best place to be seen some of the updates for Knit City is Instagram. I've posted a highlight of the majority of the fabrics that will be coming with me. Um, 
and last week Dallas is currently studying for an exam um, for his next step up for his power engineering. Um, he's got four more exams, so he's halfway through this set, and then he's done. Um, these are the first class exams, so he's currently in second class, and then the first class will be the highest level that he can attain with power engineering. So, rooting for him. Um, yeah, the last four, and then he'll be free and clear, which would be fantastic. And he did actually go through and floor more of the basement, so that's exciting. Um, he's mostly through the hallway now, which, uh, is really strange but it has actually made the sewing area feel quite a significantly larger as well which is super cool um so that's nice it's made it feel more finished more welcoming we got the door up so now the cat boxes are back downstairs as well um i'll give you guys a tour once it's actually finished <laughs> and everything is down there and i've tidied up so this will be post knit city for sure like i'm not gonna you be uh doing any tours before that that's for sure because <laughs> even if it's finished it's not it's not fit for company <laughs> it's barely fit for me um although I did go through and actually do a pretty good tidy this week it's just it's also stuff like what do I do with pattern pieces how do I store pattern pieces um even if I bag them up where do I put them like it's just it's figuring some stuff out like that um so there was that, and so he's studying, so this next week will be a lot of sewing and studying for him. Well, sewing for me, studying for him, uh, which is good because as per usual, for all of my wonderful plans at the beginning of the year, I have left sewing up until the last minute again, as usual. So um, I will get it all done, <laughs> I hope. And if not, well, there's lots of bags to choose from still. I just want to get some new prints out for you guys. So that is where I will be cracking down in the next few weeks. And yeah, um, the weather's definitely shifting. I have a 5K race next week in Camor again. Um, the debate was between a 5K and a 10K. I did do the 10K earlier in June. Um, but I didn't. Uh, my body is not prepared. Sorry, I totally blanked there. My body isn't prepared for another 10k yet. I definitely hurt myself doing the 10k last time um, in my ankle area, so I figured that I would step it back a little bit and do a 5k. I know I can run a 5k, can run a 5k decently well most of the time, um, just so I don't cause myself more injury right before show prep and everything like that. So, um, because in the end of it all, that all I could really do at that point was I needed to just rest my ankle. And granted, I will be doing that for most of September with the sewing anyway. But I don't want to be in pain while I'm resting my ankle. <laughs> um, so 5k in Camor. And then I think next spring I'll be going back into 10k for... There's some races in late May and such that I really want to participate in in Camor as well. And hopefully the weather is nice enough that I can continue to run outside. Although I have a feeling I'll probably start ramping up doing spin and yoga because they are ramping up their class schedules as well at the studio I go to. So I have a feeling that that'll be where I'm spending most of my time. Because let's be honest, I'm not running out in the ice or minus 40. So I might as well go somewhere where it's hot and sweaty, yes, but that I'm still getting my exercise. <laughs> I'm not going to lie and say that I'm going to go running in minus 40 because that's not how this works. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> way more information than you guys actually want to know probably but I think that's really all that's happened this week and so I hope you guys all have a fantastic week happy crafting and I will chat with you next week likely on Friday again I feel like Friday is just working out a bit better right now I'll let you know if that changes or obviously I will just post earlier and let you know that recording is going back to Wednesday um, it will definitely be recorded on the Wednesday before Knit City and there will be a special episode with a massive um, shout out to all the new bags that I'm going to be bringing to Knit City as well. So there is that too. Uh, so yeah, have a fantastic week guys and I will chat with you soon. Bye!